Welcome back, class. We are back in school on at Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Uh, have a seat. And we've got some LHLM 101. And today's topic is an overview of targeting in marketing. Conrad, why don't you define what we mean by targeting? Yeah, so tar- I mean, at the very highest level, targeting is ensuring that you are putting the right message in front of the right person at the right time. Um, and one of the keys with targeting, one of the difficulties that law firms have, uh, especially the smaller you are and the, in the bigger market that you're in, it's very difficult to try and boil that ocean or, 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 or reach the entire city. Um, and the smaller your budget is, the more ineffective it is when you try and have that really, really large reach. Because as we talked about at the last podcast, people really need to see things seven times before they even remember anything. Right. And so it's that repeated exposure. How do you get repeated exposure in an entire city? You don't. But if you can constrict that market, constrict where those ads are being delivered to a segment of the population, you'll do a lot better. And there are lots of different ways. And we'll put these in the notes. There's a great post from HubSpot about uh, identifying target markets. There are lots of different ways to segment out a market. Um, and we're going we're gonna to kind of cover, cover four of them. The first gi is behavioral targeting. What do we mean when we talk about behavioral targeting? So that's based on some user's behavior. It might be that they've already visited your site. In the case, you might do retargeting. It might be that they are following a certain um, client journey. So you might see in your analytics data that a large number of your clients follow a certain path. Maybe they you know, subscribe to your email and then they click on your site and then they click on an ad or something like that. And so you can use that to inform your uh, targeting, your ad targeting. One of my ba- my favorite behavioral targeting that you can do is identifying people who have visited competitive sites. So I'll move outside of the legal world. But uh, if, if I start looking at the Ford website, I may get hit by ads from Chevy without having ever been to the Chevy uh site. So interesting, interesting ways to do behavioral targeting. Um, the next one is psychographics. Okay. What do we mean by psychographic targeting? So this is identifying, um, beliefs, um, attitudes. Uh, I, I like to think about it as like, this is the, like what keeps people up at night in the context of your potential clients. And so, um, you know, I think lawyers would probably be familiar with this in terms of jury selection and voir dire when they're trying to understand people's biases, beliefs, and attitudes. Uh, that plays a role in your uh, audience targeting too. Okay. Um, psychographics, and, and the one that's often associated with that is demographic. Demographic targeting, give me a great example of where demographic targeting is super important in the legal world. Well, you know, uh, in, in certain practice areas, you know, lawyers want to focus on people who can afford their services. And so, you know, especially in, they think about like family law and divorce and, um, you know, a lot of lawyers are like, well, I want to serve, I want to do these high net worth divorces because there's more fee in it for me. But um, you know, there's all sorts of demographics that you might consider. Um, age is a demographic. Um you know, technically locations of demographic. I know we're going to talk about that as a separate one, but um, right. yeah, it's a, it's the it's the data audience data that you can use to inform your campaigns. It's interesting with location and the the geographic targeting. I mean, geographic basically means where you are. Um, geographic targeting can be really effective at hitting both demographic and psychographic targeting. So th- this type of person lives in this neighborhood, but it really depends on the city, right? And it depends on your area. You may have a city that is, um, you know, seg- segregated by affluent areas and non-affluent areas. And then, you know, I think of of, of Philadelphia as a great example of a city that does not look like that, where block to block, the, the the demographics are amazingly different. It can really change. Seattle's very similar to this too, where just really small changes in where you are physically can have a massive impact uh, on, on, on what your demographics look like. Um, Geographic targeting, really, really important. We're going to go deeper into that. The, the really cool thing about, and I think this is why uh, social ads are so effective, is 
our ability to now identify people through targeting, behavioral targeting, psychographic targeting, demographic targeting, geographic targeting, it is amazing with what you can do um, through a Facebook, through an Instagram, and and all of this data really helps put the right message in front of the right person at the right time. Key, the other targeting that I really like to think about is your own CRM system, right? And yes. that, that so so can you talk to me a little bit more about how lawyers are using their own and, and I mean a CRM basically at the most basic level is a list, but how are we using lists and CRM systems to actually tactically target people? Well, I'll give the easiest one to me. Uh, the easiest one is custom audiences, right? So you've got, you know, ideally you have a segmented list, meaning you've got a list that contains a group of people who are former clients. Maybe you've got a list that's like referral sources. Um, maybe you've got, um, and that, that referral uh, source list might be segmented by like uh, out of state, other out of state lawyers that might refer you cases because they don't practice in your state, or it might uh, be uh, professional service providers in your area that don't do what you do because you know they get these questions like you know who do you like for X legal thing, and so by taking that CRM data, those email lists, you can create this custom audience on a social platform and then stay top of mind with messaging with ads that are specifically speaking to, you know, that segment. So, you know, f reaching out to former clients, um, you know, and then that's not, and we're talking about in terms of, um, you know, retargeting and custom audiences. But the other thing that is super powerful with CRM data is, is the personalization aspect because you can actually send them like an, a message on their birthday. You can, you know, you have um, maybe their anniversary. You know, if you have anniversary data in your uh, CRM, you can wish them a happy anniversary. And uh, I think that kind of segmentation um, is extremely powerful. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, I, you know, we're seeing more and more corporate law has, has for years and years, decades been effective with CRM based marketing. And we've seen an explosion of CRM-based solutions uh, sold to the the, the, the consumer-facing legal industry. So that is that is absolutely going to continue to separate the wheat from the chaff when it comes to to marketing effectiveness. All right. So our big takeaway here is just because you're in a huge market does not mean you need to boil the ocean. And with targeting, you can actually drill down and find the right people, put that message in front of the right people at the right time. It's not just about your target clients, right? Money